His name is Thomas Adoski, and he is one of the stars of Tommy on CBS that airs Thursdays at 10 Eastern Time. Good to see you, Thomas Adoski. Good to see you back here, good brother. Good to see you, too, How you been? You I've good? been great. Yeah, I've been great. How'd you handle this Ravens season? Let's get right uh, into I it. I mean, I was, I was thrilled. I was also terrified. The instant we got to the play, first of all, I mean, Lamar Jackson single-handedly changing the game, revolutionizing you know the way the game is played right, right. now. The single most exciting athlete I've seen in football since Barry Sanders. Like every time he touches the ball, you just your some your heart rate goes up and you, right. you go like, "What's going to happen next?" And as a fan of the Ravens, the most terrifying player. <laughs> like every time he took off outside of the pocket, I was like, "Oh God, no, please get no. down, right? Get yeah, down, get down, get down, get down, kid, get down." And um, I, I spent the season just like yo-yoing back and forth between those things. And then when I saw the draw for the playoffs and saw that we had Tennessee. And people were like, "Oh man, we're gonna you know, next stop Kansas City." I was like, mm. "I said the instant, the instant I saw Tennessee, I said we got a problem." They just had a whole. They played football. The Ravens mouth. played the right. world in in the early two thousands, right? And and beat us with it because we didn't. We don't have as of right now the defense we had. During yeah. Those. Well, I guess you'll probably never have that defense again. Well, too, no one ever so will. Damn, but right, it, we it's so weren't. damn special. But I think, you know, what the Ravens do need is one more, well, at least a viable wide receiver threat. You know, I know I I, I, I like the number of tight ends that they have. Yeah. And Hollywood Brown was terrific in week one. And then he was great out here in Los Angeles yeah. when he caught several of the of the five touchdowns yeah, yeah. by Lamar. He was he's uh, a kid. You know, Willie Sneed. You'd, I, I, we yeah. just I, I think the Ravens, if they could add some sort of Physical beast wide receiver. Trade up, trade up and and, uh, and and grab Jefferson or somebody. Right. Or or get either any name someone from Alabama, pretty yeah. much. No, seriously. Like that, I mean, if you that, can trade that, up, if you can get up that high. I don't think you can. <laughs> you know, but, but but try but they're so deep that the wide receiving class that we're gonna see at the combine next week, uh, you is. could sit back on uh I think that's uh, Thursday night, you'll see them all and it's supposed to be incredible. But just yeah. that would be a great new shiny absolutely would love weapon. to see it we've done that before you know put all of our faith in drafting a first round wide receiver mm -hmm. Rashad Perriman comes to mind that hasn't panned out what right. I'm most interested in seeing the Ravens do is build the interior offensive line and build their defense back up because Lamar Jackson Ingram even with the weapons they have on the outside right, right. now and the tight end scheme that they're using I think can be a real force in the NFL but it's in as much as the game is changing, there are certain aspects of it that you absolutely have to, right. when you get into the playoffs, play old school style football in order to win, just like Tennessee did. Like they proved it again and again and again and again. And and that's why Kansas City so amazing throughout the course of the year. Right. They had those sort of fundamental things on lock, and that's a place where the Ravens have been shaky the last few years and definitely were this. But what year. has it been like for you to have an MVP quarterback? With yeah. all due respect to Joe Flacco, and by the way, yep. uh, here on the Rich Eisen wow. Show, by saying with all due respect, you can say anything you want that's disrespectful after that. Sure, no, absolutely. Uh, but, you know, Joe had an incredible playoff mm. run the year that the Ravens mm -hmm. won the Super Bowl mm -hmm. with Flacco. Mm -hmm. Certainly, with he bet on himself, and that is always pressure-filled, and he had a great year. I'm done trying to set up the fact that I did say something disrespectful for Joe. But what was it like to have from week one, week 16 – for the probably the first time in your fandom, a quarterback that was clearly far and away the best quarterback in the NFL for a playing season. It was so fun. I had to have been. I, it was so fun. God, I mean, I you know, I sort of flashed back to like what it must have been like for for Falcons fans in the early you know Mike Vick days, right? And and the Eagles fans during the Randall Cunningham days, and like. You know, I, I just and I, I sort of vaguely remember like what Colorado Buffalo fans were like. You know, during the Cordell Stewart year, you know, like that, I'm like they just they were walking on air and totally thrilled, and everyone wanted to watch their games, right? Because of everything that was going on, and you just going, yeah, 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 those are our guys, yeah, that's our guy, that's our dude, and then you get to see the rest of the of the organization, and what's so beautiful about the Ravens is that they're like such a perfect symbiosis with the city, like that organization, particularly this team as it existed last year, right fits that city so well that it was just it was thrilling it was thrilling to see the fans get that sort of opportunity it was it was it was, it was cool thomas sadowski here on the rich eisen show and you just mentioned you know uh, obviously multifaceted quarterbacks who can run throw sure. etc 
Brockman, uh, a uh, New England fan over there, you've had a quarterback throw 50 touchdowns in a season. I realize me as a Jet fan, I'm, <laughs> what do I got over here? I mean, the, the, we're hoping Darnold's that guy. Guy I mean, with great hair. Yeah, that I mean, guy's how many seasons guy. of Jet quarterbacking would it take but to it, add up to 50 touchdowns? It's a good point? question. Oh, I think man, maybe the last two Darnold well campaigns. Has Darnold, does he Stand even have by. 50 Stand career by. touchdown passes? Stand I don't even by. think he does. I don't even think he does. You know, Lamar had 36 this year alone. Yep. And then we perhaps had 14 in the Tim half Donald season. has 36 career touchdown yeah. passes. Oh, P.S., Darnold. by the way, one of the truly nicest guys I've ever met, Sam Darnold. When did you meet Sam Darnold? We were at a Rangers game together. Okay. And one of the legitimately nicest guys I've ever met. I, I, it couldn't be nicer every single time I've met him, I too. mean, tr really, truly funny, laid back. Great dude. Hey, first thing he did when he was drafted by the Jets and he showed up in New Jersey for his press conference, he visited a children's hospital. He's a good I man. I mean, like, this is the stuff that he did yeah, yeah. when he first started in the NFL when yeah, you're yeah. supposed to be, you know, yeah. a big man on campus. I'm the third overall pick yeah, and yeah. I'm the Mr. New York now. Doesn't carry himself like that at, at all. all. Yeah. I would just love for him to not get mononucleosis. Sure. I would like him to stay healthy outside of the mononucleosis. <laughs> Um, and I would like him to, you know, I just, I, I'm pointing out just like I've never had a football fandom year where quarterback week one, spectacular. Neither had I. And then week 16, that's is, the MVP. It's truly, it's true. I mean, you know, as, as you can talk about, you know, being a, a Pats fan, it is really mm -hmm. like it takes so much pressure off. Like you really can just sit back and enjoy yourself. Right. During these games, I mean, unless it's Lamar Jackson, he gets outside of the pocket. Yeah. <laughs> just like get down, yeah, get and then, down, yeah, you know, but like that only lasts for a couple spikes. of seconds, and then you get, you know, then you get the next couple of minutes in between plays, you know. Oh my gosh. And then, all right, all right, and then he gets outside the pocket again, and it's like, oh dear God, oh dear God. But you know, I th first of all, watching that kid throw. Yeah, I know he's amazing, and the fact that he should have, you know, when he got to the combine, we can, you know, obviously rehash history that. Let's see how fast he can run. I don't right. know if he can throw. He's right. just a runner. He's not a quarterback. And now right. he's the MVP of, of the NFL. It really is amazing. Uh, I've got Thomas Adoski of Tommy on CBS right here on the Rich Eisen Show. When you were on Life in Pieces, there were some athletes who came on, right? You had Kurt. Kurt yeah, Warner we had, came we by, had right? Warner. We had Did Marshall, uh, Marshall Falk, Falk come came by? on. Okay. Yeah. And, I mean, the thing that's hilarious about those dudes is that, like, they're still so competitive all these years later. Tell me about this. Like, uh, we had... Um, Marsh come on. We had we had him come on in um, after Warner had been on. Yes, and uh, and we were talking to to Marshall and Eric Dickerson was there, and we were talking. This is to good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were talking to uh, to Falk, and we were saying, oh, yeah, yeah, we had Warner on, whatever. And he was like, oh yeah, yeah, Kurt, Kurt, and he was telling us stories about him, which were hilarious just in and of themselves. But then he they we sort of got quiet for a second, and he got real serious look on his face, and he looked over at us, and he was like, Am I doing better than him? <laughs> Does that sound like him it or what? Exactly like Marshall. <laughs> that sounds exactly like Marshall. And it was legitimately terrifying to answer that question. So he directed that at you? At, there was a group of us. It okay. was me, um, Colin Hanks, and Dan Bacadol, and we were standing there, and he asked all of us, and every you could see like three grown men all simultaneously just pucker. Just like, like everyone was just like, yeah. Every, and you know, because you didn't want to say yes. Mm -hmm. and have Warner come back. Of course. And you didn't want to say no because mm -hmm. Marshall Falk is standing in front of you. So what did you do? Do you remember? We, just... I, I, I didn't say anything. I did what I do when I'm confronted with those situations. Mm -hmm. I laughed like an idiot, and I went to craft services. <laughs> <laughs> and I went and got some Skittles. I left that. Or I a just, smoothie. I just put, like, I put that turd in Hanks's pocket. I was just like, here you go, buddy. You... you you handle this one. Good luck. That's amazing. <laughs> so was he better than Kurt? I can't answer that uh, question. No, man. I, I'm, like, I'm far we enough. We don't have craft I services. There's no Skittles <laughs> like, <laughs> 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 We don't have any craft services. We, have no we craft do services. have an absurdly deep bowl of uh, peppermint uh, lifesavers in our green room. Mm. There's that's like an undertow if you if It you is get shocking. It has its own it sort of it has its own gravitational it's pull. Its pull. <laughs> Oh, man. So you are now in CBS's Tommy. Yeah. Uh, it's not your first rodeo with Edie Falco, correct? You were it with is her not. On no, we, we the, did, in the legit 
theater. Yeah, man, correct? we did a show together on Broadway. Uh, me and uh, Edie and Ben Stiller and Jennifer Jason Lee and Allison Pill, Christopher Abbott. Like we had this just like ridiculous sort of embarrassment of riches. The House of Blue cast. Leaves, yeah. correct? Yeah. And um, was she on The Sopranos at that point in time? Or no, no. Was this was this was Post Sopranos. Okay. This okay. Nurse Jackie. Okay. Um, and uh, and we, you know, we just we had a blast. She's, I mean. She's easily, easily, easily one of our best actors that's out there working. But I agree. She's also an unbelievable human being. I mean, you know, so professional and so down to earth, which is the complete opposite of me and Stiller when we're together. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I actually feel sorry for her <laughs> when talking about that show. Like, right. I don't bring it up around her anymore. You know, I don't, hey, man, remember that time when we were on Broadway together and I made your life miserable because you were trying to do really hard, delicate, like, finely tuned work on stage right. on Broadway and Stiller and I were both facing up stage because we were making each other laugh so much. Is that really um, what was going on? Yeah, no, we were terrible. We this were is Broadway, man. Are you really doing this? <laughs> it's not. Thomas. Dude, it's not my fault. It's Ben Stiller. <laughs> Like, what am I supposed to do? Dude, so, like, I walk out on stage. I don't know what his problem was, mm -hmm. but there was something about, like, when when... <laughs> The second act starts, it mm -hmm. starts with me sitting in a chair, like weeping my eyes out and Ben sort of standing there uncomfortably going, oh, it's going to be OK. And there was something about the idea of me sitting in this chair weeping hysterically that Ben thought was the funniest thing in the world. Why? I don't know, because he's twisted, because he's <laughs> sick, because 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 he liked making my life hell. Uh -huh. So Ben would be standing there going like trying to be really serious. And then we would catch each other's eyes and it would just. Something would happen, and the next thing I know, I'm spending the next five minutes Just turned up stage laughing, right? But making trying to make it look like I'm weeping, you know what I mean? And Ben's wandering around with that stiller smirk, and we can't even look at each other, which is a real problem. This is like stuff that I did with a substitute teacher yeah, in yeah. like the fourth grade. Mm -hmm. You're doing this on Broadway, yeah. yeah. Okay, but it's also I will tell you that it is it's a weird it's a weird experience. Yeah, it's a weird experience. That whole show was a weird experience. I, I remember right. there was one night because Ben draws like very interesting fans and like really people have like very strange strong reactions to Ben. Okay, and there was there was this moment in the show where like this this explosion goes off on stage and he takes Christopher Abbott and like they duck down onto like one knee right at the edge of the stage like right down stage by the audience. And it's right before the lights go out at the end of the first act. And he comes off stage one night and he looks at me, he comes and knocks on my dressing room door. And I'm like, what's up, man? And he looks at me and he goes, the bomb went off. I took Chris, I got down, I kneeled down. Some lady in the front row stood up and went, like hit his head and turned to her friend and went, I touched him. <laughs> like she, she broke the wall? She like literally reached across the stage. Hit Slapped. Ben in the head, like was trying to touch him, but was had to reach so far that she like hit him. It made a sound. He looked at her, and all all he heard was her turn back to her friend and go, "I touched him." Was she ejected from the uh, theater? I, I mean, don't that's, know. That's I don't like, recall. That's I mean, like touching I, a baseball in play in like you know Yankee Stadium on Broadway here. Double well, right? double. Well, sort of. <laughs> it's also sort of like reaching across and smacking Derek Jeter on the ass. <laughs> And saying, I touched him. <laughs> and saying, I touched him. While, While he's, he's making a play. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. While he's doing the flip. Right. <laughs> he's doing the flip in Oakland. Yeah, right. that would have been awkward. Yeah. Giambi might have been safe. Yeah. He was Indeed. safe. No, he was safe. He was out. Sorry. Yeah, he was safe. Oh. Thomas Sadowski here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. And now let's talk about the, the current um, show you're doing with Edie Falco. Yeah, she's yeah. playing the first ever female chief of police from Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's Tommy because yes. it's a play on her last her character's last name of Thomas. Right. You play the mayor, I play the mayor of, of this Angeles. show. Yeah. What do you like about this program, brother? I mean, I get to work with Edie Falco. Also, right. uh, the guy who created the show, Paul Atanasio, uh, wrote Donnie Brasco and Quiz Show, which are mm -hmm. two of my favorite movies of all time. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, having an opportunity to work with, with Edie, with Paul, frankly, with like this crew that we have, mm -hmm. um, you know, not only just like amazing cast of like theater actors that I've known for years and years and years, some of my oldest and dearest friends, Michael Chernis, who is for my money, one of the best actors that's working out there right now. And um, just an absolute sweetheart of a guy and like so many amazing cast members, but this brilliant crew, Edie brought in like so many people from The Sopranos and there's Jackie. So it's just like a big family. And um, we just had a blast, man, you know, and to, to get to work with her and to have fun, you know, playing a kind of a smarmy politician. It's great. 
isn't that a, an oxymoron, smarmy politician? It's an oxymoron. It's a sort of redundancy. Politician. Yeah, redundancy. Yeah, right there? yeah. I don't know that. It, yeah, exactly. You know. Um, and who decided to part your hair on the side for for the mayoral row? Is that your? Was that yeah? Your that touch? was a sort of a, that was a that mutual decision. It's a mutual you know? decision. It was a mutual decision. It was done in the hair and makeup room. I they were like, well, it needs to be. You need to look a little bit professional. I was like, yeah, let's part it on the side because that makes me uncomfortable. Okay. Cause, and because you know, right now you kind of have the Gavin Newsom. Gu gu gubernatorial hairstyle yes. that you got. Like, well, right no, now I have like do. the Northern California. Yeah, you do, right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, sort this of is, like. Right. I'm your, I'm your governor. That's right. And, uh, That's and what and you got thing. going on right here. Right, right. With the point and the wink, and then the mayoral one, you've got like the parting of the side. Of your, right. You know, the city of angels here. Right, right. I got it. Yeah, I got it. With, I you know, it. trying to be a little bit more corporate, mm -hmm. you know. I and, see uh, it. And, and, I, and I think that that's. Um, I see it. Yeah. I mean, it, it, we, there was a couple of ways we could have gone with it, and I decided this is the way. God bless you. You have an option. Some of us don't. This is all we got. <clears throat> this was also an option. We well, could have done what this? Yeah, the Colonel Tom. The, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I could. I. 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 I call it uh, distinguished. Indeed. And actually, I call it ready for aerodynamics as I'm making my run next week for St. Jude. You are making your now, run next I am, week, man. I am. Good luck with that. Thank you, sir. It I is really, that. truly one of the best things that happens in the football season. You're a good dude for saying that. No, no, it really. I mean, <laughs> like, it genuinely has become a highlight of the season. I'm not kidding. Like, athletes get into it, and it's for the literally could not be for a better cause. Thanks, man. And, like, uh, the fact that you're raising awareness doing that and and everybody, it's just sort of a testament to you that, like, everyone is so into it and has such a good time with it that, you know, like, you're obviously a great dude for doing it and everybody believes in the cause so much and it's become, like, this moment in the football season that everybody, it's like, oh, right, it is supposed to be about having a good time. Yeah, And right. you can actually do good for people while having a good time. Thanks, Thomas. That means a lot. And then, you know, you, you as somebody who knows about what it's like to perform under pressure, obviously, <laughs> um, you know. Um, Not professionally the, the guy, or well. No, the guy, the guy who always reviews, if you will, my run and yeah. my style is none other than Deion Sanders. Yeah. And he um, he doesn't uh, shy away from no. from saying what's on his mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I got to come correct. I hope I hope to run very fast. I Hold hope up. you do too. Thanks, brother. Yeah. And congrats on Tommy. Good luck with that. And let's uh, Thanks, come back anytime you want. My ah, pleasure, man. Thank you. I'd love You've to. You got it. At Thomas Sadowski on Twitter. There's an underscore in between the names on Instagram. Tommy is on CBS Thursdays at 10 Eastern Time. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.